Well, you know, one thing that's easy to overlook um, in the wide array of practices that we're talking about here is physical practice, mm. right? Because there's so much talk about the mind, there's so much talk about experiencing non-dual states where there is no opposition between the body and mind. Right. Uh, but I was wondering if you wanted to talk about you know, the role of physical practice in, in your own experience. Yeah, physical practice and, and recognizing you, you are a physiological mechanism. There's one, the most common mistake I see people making is what you just alluded to, is the fact we believe that, well, <clears throat> I can transcend this body and I can be completely beyond the reaches of this physical, you know, blah, blah. It's not the case. I mean, this is a body-mind, and if you get an extremely low energy, if you're exhausted, if you're tired, your blood sugar's low, I'm, I'm hypoglycemic, so I'm especially sensitive to this, but it's amazing how many people get into, looking somebody this last week, into huge trouble. And I said, you sound just like you're just tired. She says, well, I am exhausted. I said, well, <laughs> get something to eat, sleep a little bit, and then come back and take it. She said, oh, that's fantastic. I feel great today. <laughs> It's just, it's like that, and she, she thought she was, you know, facing into the dark night of the soul, and there was some deep, dark, dark, horrible black void in front of her, and she was exhausted and couldn't go. I said, well, take care of yourself. I mean, it really matters a great deal if your body is in decent condition, not to be fanatical about it. You do some exercise, you get enough sleep, and you get enough food, quality food. It matters. And this is right out of the Bhagavad Gita, right, if people need yes. scriptural uh, reference. Uh, yeah. I think it's chapter 6, I could be wrong. You know, Krishna is saying, I have nothing to do with people who don't get enough sleep or... Uh, yeah, exactly. You know, like, like it, it's awfully simple, but sleep, well, it's like, you eat know, well. Grandma, Mom, whatever I told you this thing, it does matter a great deal. Because if you, if you come to your practice to sit down or to do an intense inquiry of any kind, it matters. It takes a lot of energy. And the reason you know, we think it matters neuroanatomically and neurophysiologically is that this, there are two... The, we talked about the default mode network before, and the two key centers of that, and if you can shut those things down, then blah, blah, stops. We've also found, though, in the Yale work, that there are two other centers that are monitoring and control centers. Mm -hmm. And they watch to make sure these centers stay shut down. You can guess right now. It also shows up in psilocybin work out of the UK. The same thing shows up. But those two centers are important to watch to keep this thing shut down. And but these are way out the priority chain for the brain. I mean, if blood sugar starts to go lower and lower and lower, the brain's going to say, well, hold it down. I can either do fight, you know, fight and, or f for fight, or I can, you know, maintain this watching thing over this default mode network, which is a long ways away from my survival. I'm going to do fight or flight. <laughs> exactly. So fight or flight's what I'm going to do. And so it, 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 it cuts off the least important things, it's, its view of survival, Darwinian survival, and goes back down the its own food chain. So the first thing to fall off, this is my guess, we don't have proven this yet, is those two monitoring and control centers. And so if they fall out, the default mode network is back online, and you start getting into blah blah. And you can just watch this happen. As your energy level gets lower and lower, you can see, this is my, my monitor, I can watch my blood sugar energy monitor. If I get narrative thought coming in, I know these guys aren't getting fed. Mm -hmm. And if they aren't getting fed, then the whole system breaks down. Right, and this is very useful for practice, not only because it encourages us to have physical practice, mm -hmm. right, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is for us, we can find and feel our way towards what is appropriate for us. Um, but also because when, as is inevitable, there is some moment of low energy or minor illness or chronic uh, pain or something, that we can have awareness that oh, I'm just tired, or mm. oh, mm. you know, I, I'm, I'm still waking up, or oh, I need to eat something, yeah. or oh, yeah. oh, I need to tend, the, you know, my foot, mm -hmm. or instead of saying, oh my God, you know, this is it, <laughs> I've really lost it, this has all been a sham, or, you know, because almost by definition, as you laid it out neuroanatomically, there's no observer consciousness there that's able to get in and say, yeah. hey, wait a minute, you're yeah. just tired, right? Yeah. Unless we imprint that, install that in advance yeah. and saying, you know, most of the time at a certain point in your practice, yes, there's going to be bumps, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I would say 
99.999% of those bumps for me these days are physiological mm -hmm. in nature. Absolutely. And that the hallmark of them is that I don't see right away that they're physiological exactly. in nature. Exactly. Yeah. You get sucked into them saying, what's going on here? What's wrong? Oh, Something's wrong. wrong. Oh, the world is just wrong. <laughs> Everything's broken. <laughs> My practice is for nothing. Black hole sun. <laughs> <laughs> Dark night of the soul. Right, I'm fooling myself, you know, <laughs> instead of just like, why don't you have a banana, you know? <laughs> why, don't, why don't you get on your bike? Why don't you yeah, uh, exactly. drink some water? Yeah. Why don't you just <sighs> take a breath, yeah, you know? Exactly. Why don't you just realize that you're a little tired? You didn't get enough sleep last night, yeah. you know? It's okay, because it's the wheel spinning, in my experience, mm -hmm. it's the perception by you that, what happened to the bliss? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened to God? <laughs> what did I do wrong? What did I do? Uh, you know, wheel spin, wheel spin, wheel spin. Yeah. In the meantime, you're not tending yeah. to your physical practice and getting into a space, yeah. you know, a state or a space yeah. where you can really let go of the concern yeah. for the physical embodiment. And that spiral has great ability to turn itself right into the ground too, oh, because yeah. once you get away from being relatively conscious, you become yeah. less and less, and get more and more into the. <laughs> Right. You can find yourself, you know, screw right to the center of the earth. Oh, yeah. You, you Literally. You run yourself down there, and you have no energy to get back out until you just collapse. Well, I know how I get somebody. I'm just going to drink. I'm just going to drink a little whiskey. And, <laughs> and that's going to give me the energy to get back there. It's like, oh. No, no. Oh, okay, it's, I'm almost there. All right. <laughs> or whatever. Oh! You know, you, know, you know, and this is how you get in the repetitious uh, behavior mm -hmm. of drug and alcohol abuse, mm -hmm. because... You, you, you feel like you need to do something to get back to that state. Right. And there's no way you're going to get back into that state through that kind of physiological abuse. You're only going to get back to that state through actually tending towards right. your kind of evolutionary yeah. nature of your embodiment. Yeah. And, you know, again, not having to be an Olympic athlete, not having to be a triathlete right. or some kind of, you know, one half of one percent right. of the uh, physical population just tending your physical right. embodiment on a daily basis and right. being mindful about it. Right. The good news is that as soon as you start doing that, it really does seem like with the rest of the practice mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I don't, it, it doesn't feel like it plateaus. You oh, no. keep feeling better right. and right. better right. and better and then there's a feedback loop between experiencing yeah. non-dual states right. and the physical state being better and so on. Yeah. So physical practice, uh, whatever it is, it, I, it was fundamental to my own yeah. awakening. I wasn't even uh, available to there being any such thing as, you know, pure consciousness yeah. until I had swum laps for many years right. and been on the bicycle for right. many years and just reconstructed myself out of the kind of total physical despair yeah. that I was in. It's important people to, to remember too that this pure consciousness doesn't go away. It's still there. Just a question of how occluded it gets to be. And if you get into one of these low energy death spirals, uh, you find yourself completely occluded. You can't possibly get stuff out of the way enough to be able to see that consciousness is there all the time. How can there be bliss there when you know I can barely breathe? Storm clouds, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Clouds everywhere.